Good morning. Here we are again. Beautiful morning. It's August the 30th, 2012. Jupiter's retrograde. Complete. It began August the 30th, 2011. It's also the 243rd anniversary of the Lieutenant Cook sighting of the Messier Comet from New Zealand, August the 30th. 1769. We've got Rachel with us. She's outside looking at the ducks on the lake. It's all wonderful. As promised, continuing with Yahweh's ripping yarn through the time traveling machine. That would be your dream. Here we go. Get rid of this camera. Just reiterating, going over where we finished off last night, it was because of the evil of Solomon. We can look at the Quran as it honours Solomon. We know it is a work put together by Rome, shepherded by Pharisee Jews, influencing Rome, who wanted nothing more than domination and taxes. It's all bullshit, for today we have the descendants of a dubious, immoral genetic line that passes through the family tree of the Queen Elizabeth II from Vlad the Impaler. That's what rules the world today. This insanity has ruled over the invented, manipulated, erroneous offspring of an invented royal line for centuries of evil. Had it not been the impatience of Nebuchadnezzar, Judah would not have emerged alone to reunite with Judah Island. But that is a problem, even though the king of Syria was growing tired of the war, much like the adventures of Solomon, all is subject to who writes history. In the Quran, Solomon is considered a major prophet, known as Suleiman, son of David, he the founder of Freemasonry, and it a pre-modern ancient secret cult worshipping evil, blood sacrifice and Lucifer. Nothing has changed other than location for Freemasonry dominates all Western nations, but regardless of the hearts of its preachers, it's certainly a satanic cult so spiritually and physically evil a spirit was allowed to return to the earth after the flood of Noah but was no longer able to dwell on the earth as a man, meaning the giants of the pre-flood were the fallen angels, able to procreate by human beings. So we can research back in time to a pre-flood idea, which has some merit, simply because it predates all modern religions. It must therefore automatically dominate all Christian Zionist religions. Yahweh thought it was time to lay it all out for a modern, logical mind. However, who will understand? After all, if, if it were true, would it not be the news? That is far easier said than done. Today what we have are endless wars and endless economic upheavals with religion and oil dominated by Zionism and a secret hidden government within yet another layer covered over by distractions like the war on terror and a series of endless false flag operations from imminent alien invasion to destruction by the returned Nibiru solar system, the Red Dwarf, according to NASA. Basically, the world is a runaway insanity where the most evil system of control dominates. Historically, the successful forms of control are Babylonian. Babylonian fear. Or a system ruled by fear of a god, which demanded sacrifice, even demanding families to sacrifice their children to Moloch, where the victim is thrown into a burning chamber or pit. So insane is this, 
we in a modern world leaning understandably towards atheism or evolution where you're dead you're dead there is no God no Jesus mind mentality this sacrificial system of the Pharisees has been replaced by relentless wars yet all world leaders should be aware of the Moloch sacrificial ceremonies attended by many world leaders including the Queen Elizabeth north of San Francisco. The actual place of Moloch today is Bohemian Grove, north of San Francisco. This area is a 25, 2700-acre bush setting with a 45 high, 45 foot high owl representing Moloch, set on a stage in the midst of a small lake. Now, either by mistake or an act of secrecy, the latitude of the area placed at 3091 miles from the North Pole. This number, 3091, is locked in the Greek concordance. Was it intentional? Absolutely. Their mistake is that the same number in Hebrew is Joshua, or Jesus, in the Hebrew concordance. It could be that they selected the location for both names as the Jesus churches of the West. They're all Freemasonry and Jesus is a deity. The face mask of which is hung upon the body of the Freemason God, Lucifer. The Skull and Bone Society originated some say in Germany. However, that is not the point. The USA via Washington and its war machine the military-industrial complex controlled by the Pentagon is of the same insanity. The USA is the military might, the Vatican, the spiritual might, and London, financial, under the Rothschild banking system. All is Zionism. The temple priests at the cross, they do. And of course, the temple today is the earth. If we dig deep enough, we find that 5,000 years ago, the Hyksos invaded Egypt, conquered it with demonstrations of superior intellect and organised to build the structure, known today as the Great Pyramid, and is the altar to the Lord. 5,000 years ago, there were no Egyptian Freemason religion, no Catholic, no Jews, there was nothing. The Jews are also misrepresented since Judaism is an invented religion which Jesus condemned. They were not genetically of Israel at all. They were the priesthood of Babylon that was supported by Rome to dominate the actual genetically pure royal tribe of Judah, later called collectively the Jews. The tribe, as opposed to Judaism, was and is the royal tribe from which Jesus came. So we have the Egyptian myth, the hapless people with no written language, scribbles on walls, and even the men drawing the hieroglyphs did not know how to read them due to the many mistakes. Insanity that slowly developed in the 20th century to become the builders of the Great Pyramid, not to mention the 400 other pyramids. The truth is the shepherd kings from Palestine built the Great Pyramid. See that? From Palestine. Is there any wonder mm -hmm. Palestine has been trodden down by the Gentiles? The Jews who call themselves Jews and are not? If you reset your time machine for Mesoamerica, the countless pyramids there are even stranger stories. This time the natives tell how seven feet tall White-skinned men with red or blonde hair, full of beards, blue eyes, 300 pounds, wearing white robes with a golden belt and their arms covered to the elbow. The natives, at best, are five feet tall, 100 pounds, black eyes, black hair, dark skin. The men today still talk of the angels led by Kukulkan, who they saw as the Messiah figure, built all of the wonders, then left, saying he will be back. The angels taught of agriculture, medicine, God at work, is nature at work. 
warning if they returned to devil worship and blood sacrifice, they would be destroyed. On the main temple today, there is a skull carved representing the white kukulkan and a circle with a cross in it. Needless to say, they started blood sacrifice, creating terror throughout the land. Kukulkan was tall with white skin, blue eyes, silver hair and a beard. When the conquistadors arrived, Cortez was tall, silver haired, blue eyed, with a beard and white skin. This caused such a shock to the Aztec army, they were entirely overcome by just 200 men that destroyed and burned their cities, just as they had been warned. Today, the insanity of the royal families of Solomon's Freemasonry promotes a fictitious genealogy that has the Queen Elizabeth II descended from an Egyptian Jesus who married his half-sister Mary Magdalene. If that is not stupid enough for you, they continue to link to Isis by the parents of Jesus, Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. And so we have the monarch of England sitting upon the throne of King David, King of Israel, a supposed Egyptian head of the Church of England representing Christ. And she, Elizabeth, the owner of the world, as well as the church, and the Freemason, King James, 1611, Bible. Contemplating what you have discovered, you set the dial on your time machine to Stonehenge. Huge 80 tonne Saracen stone set up to reveal mathematics that identify by the perimeter of the 30 uprights 316.8 feet around being Lord Jesus Christ. Measured with the British system of feet, a measure that is revealed in the Great Pyramid. As is the inch, foot, mile, rod, acre, etc. In short, the entire British system of weights and measures. Then the number 3168 in Greek gematria is Lord Jesus Christ. Your time machine then soars to Wales, 145 miles away, to an area scattered with stones so hard one could pound it with a sledgehammer and chisel point all day and not mark it. Yet they were split off the cliff. Set the dial to the second coming of God and immediately it locates 105 Rothschild Avenue, Roseberry, Sydney, Australia. <gasps> Hovering over the very crib, he would be restrained within until he was 942 days old. Then follow the move to three old Botany Road mascot nearby. The machine would then take you to a solar eclipse, 8,888.8 miles away to the 25 degree latitude just below the Great Pyramid. The date, 14 days after God's rebirth. January 25th, 1944. Press the auto button and another solar eclipse, this time in 2012 above Australia, where the dial reads out 25 degrees south latitude and is 942 miles to the same crib on Rothschild Avenue. The Y button is pressed. Then comes the answer. The 942nd verse with the name Jesus is displayed. The last verse of the Bible, Revelation 22, 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. It has a gematria of 528, the perfect life-sustaining frequency and is the number with a zero added of feet in a mile. Perhaps. You will notice the coat of arms of the king hanging over the crib. 
There it is. Crown of David. Now you set the dial to historical figures. So you enter Pythagoras. Suddenly you're back to the Great Pyramid. A young man measuring, studying under a gathering of priests, wearing white, custodians of the mysteries of Egypt. Secrets handed down from the builders. Huge men who had built it then returned to Palestine where they built Jerusalem. Twenty years pass and you see the Babylonian army capturing Egypt and Pythagoras taking him to Babylon as a prisoner. Jerusalem pops up on the screen. Suddenly you peer down over the city as a huge sandstone block is being placed where the temple would one day be built. Press the details button and it weighs 555 tons. The Y button again, the answer. The word Christ occurs 555 times in 522 verses of the KGB 1611. Pythagoras was influential in reviving the mathematics he observed within the Great Pyramid as being the altar to the Lord. And since it is absolute, the Pharisee priesthood of Babylon moved their venom to Jerusalem, setting the stage to overcome the coming of the Lord Jesus. Pythagoras remained in Babylon for 13 years and became the prominent figure. The scribes recording the melding of Egypt, Greek and Magi, knowledge from Persia. And this came Daniel and the story of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel predict, predicted the following. Daniel 7-9 from the book everybody is reading. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Hebrew Dictionary 79 The primitive root, probably to float away as vapour, but used only as a denominator from 80 to be dust, that is, grapple or wrestle. Suddenly you're being transported through space-time to ride over a hill in Port Alberni, BC, Canada. A phone conversation is overheard, a sinister male voice warning her that he got away with it this time, but the next we will put him away forever. Tell him this number. He will know what it means. Write it down. Get a pen and paper. She does. Okay, she says. Eight five one seven. She panics. They are going to lock Christ, her husband, away forever. <gasps> He'd been charged from the Forensic Institute forty days past June seventeenth, nineteen ninety-five, having wooed with delight his psychiatrist. He became the Messiah, the Christ. He's under a restraint order. Go within 600 feet and he is arrested. <laughs> but he loves it. They had set up the ultimate trap. Pauline. The Christ loved her, loved her as he thought would please her, even bringing her estranged daughter into Canada, then forging documents and getting her a new identity. Lynette, his wonderful stepdaughter, she replaced his lost Tracy Lee, who never loved him as he loved her. He got, this is called the Bewilderment Zone. Music, Twilight Zone. So at this point, what has happened to your soul? Has it broken through? The computer is playing the song 
be happy. It would take the enlightened at this point to take a look over your shoulder. YouTube, Heiko, son for ya. That would be Heiko, H-E-I-K-O, son for ya, spelled S-U-N-F-Y-A-H, all capital. Go and do it now. Seems like we're moving right along here, back in time. So what did the Pharisee priests do? They had to remove Asherah from the scriptures, the mother figure, the wife of Yahweh. Her name is Asherah. So just what did they do? The priesthood in Jerusalem could not eliminate her as the women had prayed to her and made images for their homes as veneration. The name was changed to groves. So the wife of God becomes the trees they had erected around the altars to Yahweh. And the little title here, all about Asherah. Although the word Asherah does not appear in many Bible translations, including the King James Version or the New Revised Standard Version, it does appear 39 times in the New International Version and also 39 times in the New Living Translation. The Hebrew word for Asherah as, is translated as groves in the King James Version and poles in the New Revised Standard Version. There are actually a total of 40 references to Asherah in the Hebrew Bible. Most of them found in the book of Deuteronomy, always with a negative connotation. Like the name Lot, it is more likely they set up the grove to think to the goddess Asherah, as the word grove is a translation. Quoting from Deuteronomy 16, 21, Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. The number 842, honey, 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 honey. We're on to the most important part here. Asherah, the grove. It's my number, babe, coming up. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, 842. This is the Hebrew dictionary, Asherah. From 843. Happy. <laughs> Asherah. Mother and father. Father begets mother to beget children. The mother is the, or the wife or the woman, adds to the value of the family. The family before the wife comes in. Well, hello. How can there be family if there's no wife? Exactly. Exactly. You know, you're the only male soul in the universe. How in the hell can you beget children? If you and everyone will finally wake up and say, Ah! Oh. <laughs> They only talk that I've been called that before. Ah, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what have we got? We've got 842 Asherah from 833. Happy Asherah or Astarte. <laughs> A Phoenician goddess, also an image of the same. Grove. Compare 6253. Asherah, probably for 6251. Ashtoreth, the Phoenician goddess of love and increase. <laughs> <laughs> love and increase. It's all about the love. <laughs> right, babe? Okay. Oh, here we go. The Asherah name is in the NIV, but the KG, KGB, KJV, and the KGB, <laughs> has been changed. KJV Exodus 34:13. Where have we seen that number before? And you, but ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. <sighs> NIV Exodus 34:13. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles. In both cases, the altar has become altars. The image has become images, and Asherah has become groves, suggesting many poles were around the altar become plural, not singular. Jesus said God is love. Yet all throughout the Torah, 
God is a ruthless, blood-shedding warmonger which commanded Israel to slaughter and kidnap the virgins for themselves. Reading from Numbers 31.16 in the KJV. Actually, verse 17. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. Verse 18. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. Does that sound like Jesus? Does that sound like this dude here? Jesus? Continuing with the script. An abomination. Well, I had been smoking out of the mascara, you see. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just sit, okay? <laughs> Don't confuse everybody. <laughs> Continuing with the script, it's an abomination and hardly the God of Jesus. All we have then is the insanity of religions with a very evil agenda, all pouring out of Babylon by the false priesthood, the Pharisees. Have you mentioned uh, Dex has been uh, missing for... Yes, we haven't heard from Dex. We got this text. A text from Dex. Fill well, on the story. Then well, anyone who's just started watching, right? What's happened? Dex come out. MI6 agent <laughs> gets converted. Stays there ten months. Eleven. Goes down. He's now illegal. Goes down to the airport. They said they'll let you out of here like a flash. Twenty-four hours later, he's sitting in London. Well, we get a text. We don't know anything except we get a text from his phone. Was well, supposedly from his phone. Must have been from his phone because it said Jonas. <laughs> And he says, just got home, about to crash, give you the lie down later. Well, that was, uh, what, 48 hours ago? Yeah. How long does it take to crash and recover from a flight? Not that long. He well, hasn't been... Well, so. it does take yeah, quite a well, while. And he hasn't been on his YouTube site since August the 11th. Anyway, we are really, really, really thinking... Yeah, you mentioned on him. August 30th today? Yes, I have. This None is the day it all happens, right? <gasps> is this the shit this hitting the fan today? This is over. Whoa! We've got the Jonah back in Babylon. Now Babylon Nineveh. was identified as being London by the uh, date and a length of sunlight for that day. So you take the Babylon number, mm. I think it's 864 or something like that. You then see what date it is, 864 in London, and something very, very suspicious happened. Auspicious happened. Audacious happened. Audacity, 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 audacity in your audacity. faces. That's the Freemason credo. Audacity, audacity. It's so audacious that you can't believe it. It's so in your face, you just simply have trouble believing it. That's how they've operated, hidden in plain sight, in your faces. And they go, but we warned you, we told you, because that's the rules of their engagement. Okay, let's move right along in this ripping yarn. I do have a few um, blackmails up my sleeve. Ooh! Michelle's family. <gasps> Either start telling the truth or they're fucking ratchet. I'll expose a lot. Um, Pauline's family. Mm -hmm. I could expose heaps there. Ooh. And have the government come down now. <gasps> The government of God. Yeah. Which won't pay me my pension, by the way. Oh, they're stuffing around, aren't they? So mm. whoever is stuffing me around is going to just face a long term in prison themselves. Mm. Okay. Well, it's coming all directions, isn't it? It is. <laughs> totally. The tsunami. It's a, it's, a, it's a spiritual tsunami is what it is. That's it. Okay. Do you think I'm going to let the bloody earthquake spoil this beautiful view? Of course you're not. You know, well, this is... Doesn't it say something about even the trees are bane or something like that? Oh, totally, bad. The palms bend over as yeah, 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 Jesus so, walks so into... So apparently the, uh, the, the hurricane that they were brewing up, um, Isaac, has been... Uh, it's gone back out to sea. Strange, eh? Hmm. Now, Even did you though see they how many radar beams they had on that thing, yes, assisting hard to get it done? Yes, totally. Have we got, can we get that up on the internet and show the people? Uh, yeah, later, Gator. Um, well, what it was, yeah, was yeah. 
the uh, lower part of the United States. The whole eastern, right it was inland, almost to the central. All the eastern seaboard, right through across Texas to the Panhandle, over the Gulf, was this gigantic up to radar. maximum radar of every installation the Army's got. Out of sight. And half hitting the central point. They're trying to split the Madrid line, but we have our people sitting on it, and therefore it cannot happen because our angels are there. That's right, Catherine. We have Catherine. Catherine's been bombarded with every diabolical mind-controlled apparatus I've ever heard of. It's coming in sounds, it's coming in trains, it's trains coming in locusts, locusts, locusts controlling the dogs. coming in, you name it. And she's been chatting with me over the Skype what? through it for hours and hours and hours. And they are repeating to her what it is that we are Skyping and they are reversing it. However, she's, the gig is up because she's well aware of what they are doing. The gig is up? And she is laughing. You say gig or jig? Gig. Oh, gig. The gig. The jig. The gig. The gig, isn't it? The gig is the up. Jig. Or the, the jig, jig is up. Oh, the jig is up. Well, nowadays it's the gig. <laughs> <laughs> right? <All> right. <laughs> it's the gig. It's all about the gig. The gig is you up. You something unusual about my very attractive glasses? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> you better got one pair on. <laughs> oh, you, oh you, you've got a sticky thing out of it. Yes, I see. <laughs> I understand it. You know what? Because you hook the other pair on top? Exactly. Ah. The oh. father of invention, the creator. So you can look at one and then look at something up close. <laughs> so you, they're your bifocals. Now, and through the centre, it's double magnification because if one's lined up with the other. Right, okay. Not as good as a magnetic motor, but it's close. So six eyes, that, that'd be out of Ezekiel somewhere. What do you think of the magnetic motor? Oh, I think it's glorious. Is that the wheels within wheels? That's the, oh, totally. The wheels within wheels! Why? Yeah. Ezekiel 3168, uh, his name yeah. is in Hebrew. Yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. In Greek. Uh. And it says in 24 of Ezekiel, so you got 3168 Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus verse, in it, it done a, I haven't even done a geometry or right? Like, let someone else do it. <laughs> but in it, it says, when you see this being done, it's talking to Ezekiel, it said Ezekiel names him. When you see this as being done, you'll know that I am the Lord God. <laughs> that is the uh, saga of the uh, book that fell open at page 255 uh, of the Australian Mercantile Law, Law, written by the House of Lords All about in the check 1827. Being about a check a that I checks. had allegedly changed and cashed. I mean, it wasn't me, it was my wife. But she had lost a baby, murdered by the Zionist. Zionist. I told her not to take some pills, and she took them because she was feeling sick in the last week of the birth. Then the baby died. Mm. And you saw right through the soul to the yeah. devil that was sitting in the doctor, right? That's right. Because the guy the guy who mysteriously, gave her the, these drugs. The, mysteriously, her doctor had vanished. Lovely man. You know, you know, gynecologists usually they're beautiful people. Mm. Right? All women fall in love with a gynecologist. That's what happens. She did. Oh, There's another story. I forged her signature to get her son a passport. In, in one hour. 13 minutes. The fastest passport issued in, on record. Like, in Canberra. Hello. As if they didn't know, right? Now, ah, I got me a passport as well. 13 minutes, that was a royal record. While I waited. <laughs> and it's Brian Lionard Marshall. And I, she said, but your name's Leonard. I said, no, it's Lionard. I said, you look at the birth certificate. Now it's written out. It's L-I-O-N-A-R-D. My mother always called me the little lion. <laughs> the Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah. Now that's on the birth certificate. That's interesting. Property of the Baron, of course. I'm worth about 12, 12 trillion dollars at the moment. Well, what's the wealth of the Earth? About 12 trillion dollars. Oh, it's more than that. Somebody said that Elizabeth was worth 17. Whatever Elizabeth is worth. Whatever it is. It's all God. First chat numbers. Well, no. 
got our own currency anyway. Now it's interesting about that, um, I was just thinking about uh, Pauline's doctor being switched at the last, coming mm. down from the last week. So was mine when I gave birth to Adam. Mm. He, he was going to be there all the way through. And then at the last, there's a locum in place. And uh, turns out to be a, a woman doctor, which was preferable anyway. And she ended up being in the labour ward with me all day. We, ha we had a party. Giving birth to Adam was, um, well, it was really very interesting because I didn't want any in intervention again. I prayed <laughs> for everything. I got everything I prayed for. I'd learned through each one of my children because I prayed throughout the pregnancies and I ordered the labours and that kind of thing. And from Abby's labour, I ordered a labour between two and three hours. Well, I got three hours and I, could, I couldn't even pick her up. My body was in such shock. So I learned after that. I said, Lord, <laughs> how true is this? How true is that? You know my body better than I do. I'll leave the labour up to you, meaning the length of time. But I did order it to be on a Saturday because I didn't want to inconvenience anybody. <laughs> you know, like Richard being at work or anything like that or putting anybody out, like the family. Hmm. And uh, so 6 o'clock on the Saturday morning, Get to Adam. Yeah. Well, this is how I'm getting to Adam. Um, the waters break. I get taken into the hospital. So the locum, she comes in and her, she, she's a jogger, you know. So she's in her jogging outfit and she just stays all day. And she's sitting around on the thing. So I'm walking around, you know, and, and pacing. <laughs> like a Yale walker. <laughs> and, uh, oh, the day before, I have to you talk. You wasn't wearing yellow, were you? No. The day before... We were, remember I told you the dream? I had a dream about, this is while in Australia. Had a Can dream. You get to Adam? You're giving <laughs> birth. Okay, getting to Adam, giving birth. I'll tell about the, the dream in a minute. So I'm walking around, now, I didn't wear any drugs or anything like that. Getting down to the time to push, because it was from six in the morning I started, so we're getting down to time to push. I'm in the, the labour chair, table, whatever it is, three pushes and three times because, you know, the pushing hurts like anything. <laughs> I'm being restrained here. However, at the climax of the contraction, all of you women know about this, at the climax of the contraction, which is the most painful, I'm taken out of my body. I'm not in my body anymore. I, I, but I'm at the cross. I'm at the foot of the cross. And I'm looking up at my Lord. This is 1991. And all the blood, the gore, the... the, the it was... Uh, you know, the passion of the Christ is close, but it was really much worse than even the passion of the Christ. And I'm thinking about Isaiah 53. I'm, I'm there, and I'm thinking about the scriptures. It's all about the man of sorrows who takes Smashed up pain. Almighty, except the seven. Yes. He takes all of our pains, and he bears our sorrows. And as I'm there... The has teeth on the bottom, sometimes only seven. As I'm, the, uh, as I'm there looking at my Lord and I'm thinking about Isaiah, it's going through my head. I'm not experiencing any pain. And then as the contraction lessens, I'm back now in my body. And I'm going, oh, I'm still here. And then we go through a second contraction to the climax. The same, I'm back at the foot of the cross. I'm not in my body. I'm not experiencing any pain at the heart. And I'm thinking again about Isaiah. It happened three times. Three times I was taken back to the foot of the cross. I wasn't experiencing any pain because my husband on the cross was taking it all. After the Peak of the third contraction, that was the one that pushed Adam out. And I'm <laughs> back in the Buddha here, I'll come here and Adam's coming. 
And of course, he was perfection. You know, the Apgar tests that they they do, the colour and oh he, he was perfection. It's all pink and beautiful and perfection. The long awaited son. Three daughters before, dearly beloved, the long awaited son. That was Adam's birth. Now, at the time of course, I thought I, I, I reflected on uh, being there at the cross. Oh, I pondered everything. I used to say that I got my um, revelation through, you know, mopping floors or cleaning toilets or whatever. They were my greatest revelations at those times about all things. And as I pondered everything, I, I would go back. And, but in my mind, because I didn't have a clue who I was, and I wasn't asking like, who am I or anything like that, I just accepted it. And I thought, well, all women. Well, you know, I thought, well, probably a lot of women have the same experience. Of women do. Mm. And of course, when I find him, because <clears throat> I've been looking for him for nine years since 1999, <laughs> when the angels could have told me his phone number. <laughs> However, it wasn't time. It's, to get all it's all about synchronicity. Yes, you had to get Trinity. Yes, you did. You had to that get was it. a promise I gave to my son who was murdered by the filthy swines. The mm. You had to get Age goes on. They'd better run and hide. Oh, Trinity was born 21st of February, right? 2004. Yeah, mm -hmm. 2004. It was all over for both of us. Mm. In, um, yeah, 2004 was the year. Oh there. Moving right along to find the lone star. I seen the devil come out in Pauline when she got stoned one night. I got it on film. No one up there, right? And uh, I gave it to the psychiatrist. I mean, you've never seen a performance like it. A, a visual morphing of a human being into uh, a Lucifer, Satan, Satan thing. It's horrible. And I've seen the same thing on the 20th of July. 2004. 2004. On the 11th floor, there was 1112. Right? Number 12, 11th floor. I've got, it on the, I've got a photograph of it. The door. It's very prophetic. <coughs> Beautiful sunset. Never seen anything like it. And this is up on uh, Hamilton Island. I had um, earned it through using the credit card for buying and selling GPSs on the internet. Honing my skills, you might say. <laughs> and everywhere I went, um, went to Galounda one time and Michelle insisted I do not, while she's gambling my money, do not use GPS. Do not do what God does. Yeah. <laughs> so I read the book on the priest bead. Mm -hmm. and how he talked about things in accuracy of uh, three days over a period of uh, 1400 years, uh, dates of solar eclipses where when someone had been killed in honour, um, a light would beam from that area straight up into the heavens and can be seen for seven miles radius and people would come there and build a church. Mm -hmm. It happened all across England. Yes. Sacred. So I know that Armstrong walked on the moon. <laughs> He's dead. 84. 84, Marshall, Emmanuel. <laughs> Perpetuating the bullshit, but the worst than he is uh, Dr. Aldrin. Mm. Then there's another one that's working on the Shroud of Turin, like Shepherd, I think. Maybe. Schwartz, you mean? No, no, this guy's a former astronaut, but he oh, walked on the moon, okay. the fifth man to walk on the moon, something like that. Mm. And uh, he's studying the Shraddha and authenticating it and all this kind of stuff. Like, right? giving himself a real big out. Look what I've done for you, Lord. So we're up in this bloody, uh, on that date, now it's 2004, so it's 1969, I forget when that happened, in 2004 now. Mm. And I've seen the same demonic behaviour 
that have been building up on the trip up, which is going through these beautiful islands on a boat and, and bus trips and so forth. This demonic behaviour, all because she was giving up cigarettes. And I see Pauline do the same thing because she wanted to take up cigarettes and would walk seven bloody kilometres to a shop to get them in the dark. Now, what's interesting about that <coughs> day, <coughs> July 20th, 2004, you are going through that horrifying experience with uh, Michelle on this side of the Pacific Ocean. And that was the night you you reached a point of despair, did, did you not? That's when you, right. Yeah, when you realised that there was absolutely... Well, there was hopeless from that point. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm on the other side of the... But I had to Ocean. in Alaska. Yes. <clears throat> through a, a very, very uh, obscure thing that you see in, in all of the human behaviour was the night I met or took Michelle home. We'd gone to see Jurassic Park. Had a flat tyre on the old Volkswagen, and it lifted it up and changed the tyre. Doing all this sorts of thing. But when her daughter came in, she walked up to her and she was with a finger poking her on the top of the head. And Michelle was just cowering under the uh, abuse. So I started there. I've got to save this woman's ass. I mean, it was just unreal. And she's read a, read a dreadful line. And uh, I thought, I've got to save her. Well, it was a diversion off the track, if you like, because it had to include her. Because the lady that was to grow out of this dreadful child become, becomes a wonderful young woman. And out of that, she has produced two uh, children on uh, sacred number dates that are so mathematically perfect where Trinity, in particular the younger brother, will be 8.88888 repeater on my 69th birthday. And did I not cover the Trinity being the 888? Now, on the trip up, we go through Cairns and in Cairns is Trinity Wharf. <laughs> so we walk down the street, turn around, and there it is, Trinity. Mm. Mm. So at the moment of the cement, cementing of this wonderful series of, of synchronicities, uh, coincidental, which is no such thing as events, was the same day, same trip. But uh, I realised it was hopelessness. Michelle would never do what I had to do. She cannot do it. She's impossible. She doesn't comprehend. It's just some people can't. Right? I don't do shorthand. She sees it when she talks. So she's that entrained in the focus system. She was two times tap dancing champion of Australia, three times literary champion as a kid in school, telling a story from a Coke bottle's perspective, getting through the washer and refilled and recapped and then drunk by some kid again. Right. This is the so she won that three times in a row, literary champion. Mind like a bear trap. No common sense whatsoever. Totally untrustworthy. But she's damaged goods. But as most of the I, world I is. knew at that point love wasn't enough to keep me there because I had to go on uh, a crucifixion for her, I had to work out. The only way to get her into paradise, not dull. I said, you're going to do it my way. And that is absolute honesty. Come forth, tell them the truth. Because you never tell, never talk to the kids about it. Now, what have you done with your kids? Are you brought them nuts? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Got kicked out. That's home. what has to be done because you start a family conference <laughs> and all the all the dross gets pushed to the side. Rena, so forth, Carla. Your mother. Mm. Ben. Mm. I've got another Ben. Mm. That monster. Uh. Teaching children. Mm. What school is it? Barrel High, isn't it? No, uh, no, he, well, it was the King's School. King's he left there school? to go to the 
I wonder if it's uh, international, St. Paul's International. St. Paul? Yeah, international. And <laughs> the funny, this, is, this is how insane it is. Um, uh, I get and your sister's the best friend of the government general. General, yes, that's right. And wouldn't tell her that we were curing AIDS in New Guinea. Didn't want to know. Didn't Had nothing to do with her. Didn't involve her world of cricket, because cricket is all important. So uh, I destroyed her. Um, I brought the shit out of her as well in the laundry. Now. Oh, I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> you went completely to pieces. <laughs> oh, dear, I oh did. We had all these bottles made up to take over to... Uh, Colloidal silver. Yeah. Colloidal silver to take it's over to the originals. And uh, also the Flotsam wine flu coming to Barra, we wanted to say yes, enough to yes, get it to make these big tanks up, put it in the garage, and this Ben asshole tips it all out and gets rid of it. We spent yeah. hundreds of dollars now, on it setting it all up to save people's lives in case the swine flu took off yeah, so in Barra. Yeah, Ben Blake, spelt B-L-A-I-K, teacher at St Paul's International College in Mossvale, Southern Highlands. Should be tired and fit. Yeah. What a fuck what he is. He never, ever, ever once spoke to Adam, would not look him in the eye, never said hello to me while I was in the room either. Um, just a total, yet yeah, a, a disciplined demon. The kids always have to be on the move doing this, doing that, doing that, and all the rest of it. Everybody thinks he's wonderful. Well, he's got another thing coming. But it's not Oh, well, you know, keeps Dar happy. I don't know. Is she? <laughs> well, she's got Everybody's on me. the show. <laughs> That's the other son in law. Hello! What was it? What was the what saying? Yeah, I'd rather that? I'd rather be in hell if he's going to be in charge of heaven. <laughs> well, if you must out of the mouths of you know, people condemn themselves with the words that they speak, the thoughts that they think. Thoughts and then words, they condemn okay. themselves, don't they? They no, don't yeah. have anything to do with it. <laughs> oh. So the point is they can go to their heaven if they like, if they can get one to take them there. The point is, I'm taking mine to mine. Mm. Like, I don't give a fuck if you don't repent and come with us. Mm. Go to your own Jesus. What is it? Now, back in India. <laughs> oh, I think we better stop this one, let this one go on, because... <laughs> I've the Ionian teacher. <laughs> yeah, this next... is very, very, very bloody interesting. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Just give them a little taste and then stop and we'll start again. Okay, here we go. So, where are we up to? Just repeating, all we have then is the insanity of religions with a very evil agenda, all pouring out of Babylon by the false priests of the Pharisees. Still in the time machine, right? Oh, not really. You've kind of lost the time well, machine. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring it back to that. All right. All right. I've, I've, I've got it handled as the. You know, all right, let's go. Okay. All right. So what have we got? We've got the pyramid. It predates all insanity. Custodians were established to remain in Egypt and various writings survived by historians who lived 400 BC. However, what is ignored is Pythagoras, 570 BC, died 495 BC. He spent 22 years in Egypt and was initiated into the Egyptian mysteries. Egypt was invaded by Cambyses, sent to Babylon, where in the next 13 years became adept in the Magi and initiated into the Chaldean mysteries. Pythagoras then travelled to India where he continued his education with the Brahmins and imbibed the original wisdom at its source. By the time he left India he was known as Yavandakara or Ionian teacher. His students were known as esoteric. Here endeth page 15, and this ripping yarn for now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. I'll get my lipstick on. <laughs> well, I've got to... You know, you know, why the lips? Why the focus on the lips? Because they're the weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's actually on this scene, I was too. Yeah, babe, you were there the whole time. You're sitting there thinking because we can't see the... Well, 